Hey, good morning, guys. This is Ed Froelich with Ocean Deep Fishing, and today I'm going to be rigging a planer rod. I took one of my conventional rods, and I'm going to make it a permanent uh, planer rod um, to bring onto the boat. Uh, one of the unique things we're going to be doing with this one is I'm going to put a reel on bridle. We're going to make um, to take off your planer, and you can reel your line all the way to the fish um, without having to uh, hand line it in. So. I'm going to show you how to rig this up. So this morning I'm going to show you how to put the 80 pound braided line that we bought on here. We're going to fix it to a bridle which will be another video later I'm going to show you how to make the bridle and how to attach it once we get the bridle on we're going to put a hundred feet of fluorocarbon 50 to 60 pound test line which will go out to your lure or bait or whatever you're trolling um, so stay tuned I'm going to put the braided line on here and then I'm waiting on some parts to come in to, in order to build the bridle um, when that comes in we're going to make a separate video on making the bridle and then we'll attach it to this once we get that done so stick around okay guys i'm going to show you uh, a knot that i use uh, to tie the um, mono to braid and as you can see on the reel um, i have a 50 pound mono um, that i had this reel spooled with and i've taken everything off except for i don't know maybe 100 yards that I kept on as a backer just so I don't have to use so much braid uh, To fill the whole spool you don't need you don't need to fill it all the way to the bottom So this is just going to be a backer part and then I'm probably going to have um, Two or three hundred yards or four hundred yards of 80 pound braid on top of that and then from the braid we're going to attach our hundred foot uh, leader through our bridle that when I get my parts, I'm going to show you how to make the bridle. Okay Let's get to it. So the knot we're going to use today is called an Alberto knot. All right, so what you need I got a, a nice pair of braided um, Scissors to cut braid some uh, a sharp knife will do the same over there I like to use scissors when I'm on the boat. We have our 80 pound line now this is a new braided line. It's called PE braided line. I'm not sure what the PE stands for yet, but it's the next generation of braided line. I'm going to do a little bit of research on there to find out why. But anyway, I ordered the most uh, advanced braided line there is. We're going to put this on there because when we're setting up our planer rig for this, we are going to have an extreme amount of pressure that's going to be on this rod. That's one of the reasons why you really want to use a good conventional rod. This rod is a 30 to 50 pound from uh, Shakespeare, and I've had it for a while as a conventional reel for trolling lures and stuff, but I want to convert it over to strictly for planers. And with the bridle system we're going to use, it's pretty cool because um, uh, it's quick connect, so you can have them all rigged and just change out from a 2 to a 4 to a 6 to an 8, whatever you want. The biggest thing, and I'll show you when we make the bridle, is you need to make your bridle important thing is when you make your bridle you have to take the longest and largest planer you're going to use and you have to build your bridle to that uh, so that fits on there and then the smaller ones as you go smaller you can adjust the ends on the clips make them longer or whatever in order for that planer to work on the same bridle so you only have to make one bridle you make it the longest to fit the longest and biggest one you have and then they'll fit all and we're going to show you that in another video once I get my parts in on how to make the bridle. Okay, so let's tie the knot. Okay guys, so you want to take your mono and you're going to take a tag line. You're going to make a tag line. Make it long enough so you don't have to worry about it. I'm going to make it about 12 inches long. So you're going to uh, make a loop like that. You're going to take your braided line through the loop and you're going to come from the top down through the loop. And you want to pull a good 12 inches of tag line out. You can always cut it off so the longer is better. I hate getting through halfway through a knot and then find out you don't have enough tag line. Okay, so we are going to pinch this line right here and we're going to go wrap around your double braid or your double mono line 
and we're going to do that seven times. Okay, so we're going to go, we're going to go around once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven. So we got, we went around the double lined mono seven times and you can you can kind of pull it out with your fingers and you kind of see like the humps in between the wraps you can see that there's space in between those wraps right okay so what we're going to do now is with the braid you're going to come back you're going to come back down this way and you're going to wrap those all the way through in between those humps and you're going to come back that seven times okay so you're going to go in between that that's one and you can hold these as you wrap them so they don't come off okay you're going to go two you're going to go three and you're going to go four you're going to go five and it's important to get them in between because that's what's going to make the strength of your knot and i say that was five and then you're going to go six and then on seven, you're going to be facing. Now this is very important at the end. You see on your tagline of your braid, when you first went through, you went down through the loop. So now you're, the end of your tagline after you've made your wraps on your braid, you wanna make sure you come the opposite way. So you're going to, you're gonna come from the bottom of the loop up and then you're going to pull out. So right now, if you see, you see you have both lines, the first tag line you put through the loop and the last one you put through the loop, they're both on top of your mono loop. Okay, so at this point in time, you're gonna cinch it down, um, grab both lines on either end. So you're gonna have four lines total. So I just wrap around there and you're going to wrap around your mono definitely wet it and then you're going to pull you're going to pull all four lines until they come together all right so you got it cinched down pretty good now you're going to take your tag lines and you're going to pull those you're going to pull those tight you can see that knot coming in so just take a good look at that there you can see it's a very small knot. It's very thin. And one of the reasons I like this knot is because it goes through your eyes good. But this is this is good for any mono to braid any size diameter line. Unlike some other knots, you have to um, leave like a little tag in. But this knot here is strong enough. You can go ahead and you can cut that right real close to the knot. There's your knot, very strong, and it's definitely not going to pull out. The more you, the more you pull on there, the tighter that knot comes, and it's very thin. It goes through your guides real quick. We're going to wind this and get our spool full of the 80-pound braid, and then we're going to tie on the bridle. Okay guys, it's important when you're spooling your reel, make sure that you're going back and forth. Okay guys, that is the finished reel on 80 pound braided line. And it's important when you're spooling that, I'm try to get it. The distance you have here, you gotta make sure you leave enough room in there to for your wind on leader and that there's enough gap in between here so that you get your um, bridle swivels will fit through if you if you bring this up too tight you won't be able to wind on your bridle leader so that's about as full as I'm gonna make it if I have to I can pull a little bit of line off as soon as we uh, make our bridle, I'll be putting that on and showing you the whole complete uh, rig. Hey guys, okay, so we are back at our um, planer 
rig that we're setting up I finally got my parts in to build the bridle and I want to show you the bridle hopefully you can see the bridle and those are barrel swivels that make up the bridle our 80 pound braided line that goes to our reel and then we have one barrel swivel you notice the barrel swivels are smooth and flat these are 300 pound barrel swivels and they both have a hole at either end and then between the two the cord we have there is 200 pound braid so this is so that you can reel it onto your reel without having to stop at the tip of your rod and hand line it the rest of the way so it goes down to another barrel swivel which I said is a 300 pound and it keeps this from twisting and then in the back side of the barrel swivel you're going to tie on I have 60 pound fluorocarbon that goes and I have a um, it's it's ideal to go 100 feet with your fluorocarbon line from this point <clears throat> but I use the rest of my roll that I had and it ended up being like um, 74 foot is all I had on this the rest of the spool so I left it at 74 foot. your ideal mark is a hundred foot so from the end of your bridle you tie on a hundred foot car floral, floral carbon leader and that goes out to your trolling baits whatever bait you're using whether it be a skirted ballyhoo a deep diving lure or whatever you're going to tie on so the whole purpose of this rig is so that you can go planer fishing and have a quick attach and detach rig so here's my planer that I've pre-made we've got 200 pound double sided clips they come both attached just like this one is but I went ahead and I cut this one off and I I cut this end off and I'm going to show you why okay so typically guys this is where you see you have the tip of the rod so normally when you reel up your planer rig it can only go to the tip of your rod and then from this end you have your mono tied 100 foot down to your lure you're using or your bait whatever you're trolling so this has to come up here now you have to grab your line from here and that hangs from your rod tip in the rod holder and you have to hand line this hundred foot in okay okay so let's start from the beginning you're putting your line out you get your hundred foot fluorocarbon line at the very end of that is your lure so you've tossed your lure over you've reeled that out by hand until the hundred foot's out and now you're up to your bridle so what you want to do now and this is the unique part about it is you can attach your planer through the holes in the bridle that you made and it's easier to do this when you're on the boat and it's in a rod holder because you got the bait out there so okay so that's your <clears throat> that's your rig what it looks like now in order to set it you're going to put it like this here and then this goes out like that you're going to set it in the water this way and that's going to pull but then in the event that a fish bites it or you just want to um, release it because you're reeling in because you're going to move or something or it's got weeds on the thing the fish bites it boom it releases like that it floats up and then you reel it till it gets to this point and then you stick the rod in the rod holder take your take your um, planer off you set it down on the boat and now you can pick your rod back up you get it out of the rod holder and now you can reel and you can see here's your bridle coming on your bridle comes right on I don't know if you can see that your bridle is going to come right on there's your other part of your bridle and now you can reel up all the way to the fish your hundred foot leader so you don't have to hand line it in 
you can fight the fish right to the boat and then gaff it pull it in whatever whatever the circumstances is that you need it so that's it on the reel and then you have your top shot foot of 60 pound fluorocarbon that is your barrel swivels and these are a number four barrel swivel and i'm going to link the company in the description below that you can order these from i ordered 150 pound and the poundage was good but see the holes on either end the holes on either end were not big enough on the 150 pound barrel swivel in order to put this heavier wire through so this is a number four it's 300 pounds and you could actually probably go up one more to a number five um, these fit perfect but they're snug now with the number four but I got them because I don't know what kind of rod I'm going to be using eventually and I want to make sure that these fit through your eyes from the tip all the way down to the last one because you're remember you're rolling it on to your reel and I have uh, another video that shows you exactly how to make this bridle I will link that video in the description here so you can watch me how I make that bridle and then you can make the bridle and put it on your rig two or three bridles to keep in your tackle box just in case you get cut off or whatever happens that you lose one you'll have them pre-made and the biggest thing and I'll show you when we make them is um, to start your bridles and to make your bridle you have to make the biggest bridle in the beginning of what's going to be your largest planer because you have to make it fit from this end to this end on your longest biggest planer and then all the other planers will fit even if they're smaller the only thing you'll have to do is maybe make this a little longer to fit into the holes as they get smaller you still have to make the the ends extend to fit in your bridle but the nice thing about this is one bridle will fit all of your planers if you properly set it up in the beginning guys these planers are called a poor man's downrigger and i've had electric downriggers and manual downriggers on some of my other boats i usually work one planer so this is this is a good idea and then i i have three or four of these set up in my tackle box different sizes so if i'm fishing in shallower water um, i can use a smaller one and then when you're buying these there's a misconception that the size of these plates here distinguish if it's a number one a number eight or a number six that's false doesn't matter what the size it is it's rated by the sinker weight that's on the back of your planer so if this is a six ounce weight it's called a number six planer so a number six planer might not be much or might even be the same size in some companies that make this or it might be a little smaller but it's always the weight of the sinker that's on your planer, not the size of your planer that distinguishes what number it is. So just a little bit of information. Okay, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, please. It really helps our video out a lot. Helps us bring, bring this video out to more people. Hit the subscribe button there on the bottom if you haven't already subscribed. So until we see you next time, guys, tight lines. Be safe. God bless. See you on the next one.